Greetings to you all and welcome back to Let's Play to Lang Rising. Now, Baron Hartford undoubtedly have a great plan up his sleeve. What's he gonna do? Something better than Jessica's move? I doubt it. Well, he'll play his monotonous music for a start. Should really have had Imelda's theme. That was where it was. That sentence didn't make any sense. Mm. He should really have Imelda's theme. That was a good theme. There we go. That's what I get for trying to be down with the kidling, though. Now, we are going to ask Lester to return because Lester has the ever useful attack spell. But then I realise he's a sloth and will never get back in time, so I leave him to his demise. Not that he's going to die over there, but demise was the first word that came to my mind, so I went with it. Now then, Scott is going to charge forward and see if he can pick anything off. It would seem this Grenadier is eyeing up one of the two women. I believe Liana's on the left. Not that I can tell, and neither can he. Now, Bandits may be able to do the odd point of damage against Grenadiers. They're not great, but they have the potential to do their old suicide, I die, you die attack. Seems to be the only thing they're good for. But they are at least capable of doing it, unlike Phalanx, who are incredibly defensive units and incredibly poor against Grenadiers. It's not for sure at the front, it's a bit silly, even though they probably are completely out of radius. I think we would have been fine. Let's still play a little bit safe. Any experience Cherie can get would be good. I'll try to give her Bernhardt experience, but it's going to be more a case of whoever gets it, gets it. It's kind of hard to plan something like Bernhardt. Keith, also very useful in this fight. Angels, going to be pretty good. Other units are all going to be left behind. So the Ballistas we've dropped, because they're never going to do anything. The Phalanx, a waste of time. Those bandits on six, I'm not gonna, not gonna bother with because I'll have to heal them up before I can use them, and that's just more time than I care to devote. And all of Lester's forces are irrelevant because he has phalanx and he's slow. So what we have here is what we're going to do this with. If Bernhardt does retreat to his throne, we have one meteor. If he does not, then we have one sexy beam. So Haynes feeling very confident with himself there. And can you blame him? Jessica seems to move two or three times every turn, so we do need to... Well, it doesn't matter if Jessica joins us, in fact, because so long as we have all of his men killed and Jessica doesn't just charge forward and go, Come on then, Bernhardt! Then we should be alright. Because if Jessica catches up, then she'll probably start attack tattooing us or healing us, or maybe... Maybe she might cast an offensive spell. Maybe. But any of those things would be useful. So if she catches up, that's pretty good. But I'm not going to wait for her, because she's slower than Lester. Important points are to keep Cherie surrounded so she doesn't die to the Grenadiers, which she would do if I left her in such a situation. Scott, can you actually reach this turn? Barely. Next turn we'll attack then. This will just be a move forward turn. We're trying to make a nice little wall off to keep everyone safe, consisting of bandits and horses and angels. Not sure where the angels are going to fit in, but alright. Just so long as the commanders cannot be directly attacked, I'll be happy. And the next turn will be crunch time, where we will kill absolutely everything that crosses our path. As we stand in the black void, which this time is castle. I can understand that, that looks kind of like a black carpet. That is stone cobbles instead of a red carpet that leads up to the main throne, which looks like a... What a rule. I don't know, it looks like a guy whose face is melting. Not sure if anyone else can see this, it looks like a face that's melting, there's like its ribcage and its arms are bent back on itself, which makes it look like it's squatting, there's its legs. That's how it appears to me. 
to everybody else, it's probably like, hmm, it's a nice little bit of wall design. But I like to see faces in things. Makes life more fun. Regardless, this is going to do it for us. Ooh, I nearly forgot about you there, Aaron. You're still part of this attack. You have a tornado spell. He's part of the burn heart attack. He's not part of anything to do with the Grenadiers. Because his mighty, mighty 31 attack isn't quite going to cut it here. You'll notice that poor Aaron has not been given a chance to attack all level. The reason I didn't buy here an um, Arbalest was partly due to the fact that it cost 5,000 credits, and I only have 11,000 credits. So he's not worth it, in my opinion. I am buying mass units, you may have noticed now every level, I'm not serving anything. But yes, I'm not wasting 5 grand on him, he just he doesn't warrant that kind of money. And I won't need it, because soon something's going to happen, which means I don't need an Arbalest. Notice how cryptic I am about this, and trying to hint at what's happening. So Benhard is confident he can handle the bandits. Rightly so, he'll win the fight, but... Good damage. Bandits doing their usual thing, getting off a good few hits before they meet their end. Not sure if I said it before, but I'll say it again. Ooh, this is going to leave Cherie vulnerable. That's not good. It's actually not that bad, because Cherie's attack animation is so good, she'll probably kill the Grenadiers before they get to attack her. If they do go for her. Let's we'll see what Benhard does. No, he's not going to. He's going to go for the rest of the bandits. Fair enough. Now, I'm not sure if I've said it, but Emperor is a fifth level plant. He's only level one Emperor, which means he's only one level above Erwin. But he's got the Alhazard, which is a pretty good sword. And sure, he's got the Langrizer, not Erwin, poor fellow. But to be fair, Erwin's got the Demon Axe, or the Devil Axe, or whatever it's called, which is better than the Langrizer. Yes, it has a defense penalty, but Erwin has so much defense it doesn't matter. And amazingly, bandits came up exactly equal in that fight without dying. So I'm going to give this one bandit a chance of glory. Off you go. Oh, we got a taunt. A taunt that makes no sense, but a taunt. Well done, good sir. Now, Cherie may as well help herself to a single set of good ideas. Of course, she's struggling on the levels. Then, in my priority list, Scott steps up the ladder and goes, They're mine. Back off. Everybody says, Okay, fair enough. Off you go, Scott. Do what you do. And Scott's going to have himself do as many of these kills as he can manage. But then he realises he can't manage many because he's too slow. Scott has the type advantage, he has very good attack, low defense, so he'll probably do 1-1s one like the bandits did. Oh no, actually, superb fight. Well played to Scott. So what we get for rolling the type advantage. If he can kill them all, he's brilliant. I'll let some um, dragoons attack Bernhardt and see if they can do anything. Bernhardt, remember, has sword explosion, which means... Archers gets a couple of shots off before they get disintegrated, but it, every charging unit takes all ten full hits before they get a chance to do anything. Load up Scott, don't know what level he is, let's have a look. Oh, five, so same sh sort of situation as Sheree, attack one for him. Also, a handy spell. Make no mistake, I'm very handy. Now, last time we fought Ben Hart, I believe he had the Meteor spell. Not something I want him to be chucking about if I can help it. So with everything that's left, which is this horse, and this will cunningly block his throne, which is in the crotch of this face I see in the wall, with his back resting neatly in a rib cage. Look comfy. So long as those Dragoons don't die, pretty good to get a point of damage off, then his throne is blocked. So now he has to attack those horses, he can't retreat to his throne, which means he's not going to get that 40% bonus. Other things we're going to do this turn is we're going to attack the Mass Angels. 
Hopefully we'll knock him down enough so that he doesn't want a meteor. That's the plan anyway. A less impressive ultimate attack animation there by Great Emperor Kaiser Ben Hartfellow. He has a glowing green sword, which is Alhazard, which erupts in a sword explosion along the floor, or he can throw ten short swords out and hopefully hit some angels. Oh, we've made him yeah, twice. That's pretty good. One more, we'll get it in the situation we were hoping for. No, that's a shame, but I do have an alternate plan here. It is the following. I have a look at how much MP you have. Notice that you can do fireballs for a couple of straight turns without running low on MP. Notice your AoE is huge. And cast one of those, which erupts from your chest, as we've seen before. Wonderful. And pray it does one point of damage. Which it does. Look at your MP. And you toss in a bit of lightning, which is called thunder, because thunder is more powerful than lightning, even though the attack itself is actually lightning and not thunder. I never understand why spells are called thunder, when clearly people are getting struck by electricity. But there we go, let's not know, let's not know. Pain will not be casting the spell this turn. He shall be moving into a position where he can do a sexy beam. Next turn then, Aaron is going to get left behind once again. Don't even know if Aaron can reach, but next turn is going to be the time when we try to finish off Benhart. So many spellcasters. You'll notice is really, really helping us out here. Except for Jessica. She's a spellcaster who doesn't help out ever. That must be a heal spell then. Yes, okay, heal too. I was going to say, there's no way he would be casting something like Meteor if he's that badly injured. That's pretty much drained all of his MP though, so he's not going to be doing any spells anytime soon, ever. But well, we have a Bernhardt to kill. Now I am going to be cutting the video off here, reason being, I suspect there is a lot of dialogue coming up. I think that's a pretty safe bet. So I'm cutting the video off here, hopefully you'll join me next time where Bernhardt is going to die again, but this time it's the real Bernhardt. Hopefully you'll join me for that, and I shall see you then.